Saunders County. This is uh, Nate Katera, PA at Saunders Medical Center, and here is your update for March 24 on the coronavirus. Um, big news coming out today uh, for Saunders County is that we did have a lab positive case. Uh, we heard about that from the health department about this afternoon at some point, and there's a lab positive case. We don't know much about it. A 50 year old woman, uh, unsure of her uh, current situation, uh, really no other details. It doesn't come. I don't want you to get excited. I want you to get excited, but I don't want you to get panic over that there was a positive case in the lab. We've suspected that it's been in the community for a while now. Uh, if you have positive cases in Douglas County, positive cases in Lancaster County, you have people calling in with the symptoms, then it's it's been, we've been instructing people to presume that you have it. Um, the symptoms, okay, so if you're new to these videos, uh, some people will experience a loss of smell very early on, uh, then progress to a headache, body ache, sore throat, cough, uh, fever, um, shortness of breath. Any of those symptoms or none of those symptoms can be a very mild case, and vast majority of these cases are mild, it sounds like. There are cases that do end in, um, in critical management, so ICU, and, and of course you've heard that there's, there's a rising death toll as well. So don't be stuck on the, that there is a positive lab case. We've suspected it's been around for a while here um, and it's time to deal with it, I guess. And so that brings me into uh, the concern level and everybody is doing a great job uh, of social distancing. So it sounds like people are staying at home. Uh, we can just see it in the clinic numbers here. There's not near the volume of clinic patients, um, but we have a lot of concern and a lot of questions that are coming in. So I would put people on, a, on a, a scale. And I think the vast majority of people are on the concern side of things. But if you have zero is your, your middle of your scale, and that means you're, you're in the middle. You don't know if it's too bad. You don't know if it's, if it's, uh, if it's uh, nothing and you're kind of right in the middle. You're open to ideas. Then you have minus one over here where you think this is just another overblown thing. This is basically the influenza or even less. Then you move over to the positive side of things where you would find probably the majority of people that are staying at home, they're distancing themselves from their friends, um, and almost a, to the point of anxiety provoking. And I think a lot of people are experiencing that. I would urge you to go from, if you're on the minus side of the scale, um, I don't think you should be there. I think that we need to move to the positive side of the scale where we are very concerned about this and we're practicing these things you keep hearing about like crazy on the news about social distancing and this flattening the curve. And, and so we need to be concerned. We need to be concerned. Um, with that concern sometimes comes anxiety. So I want to touch on that, that as well. Um, I, just my experience. I, I am an optimist. And so I always seem to have a good outlook on things. It's going to be okay. Um, I find myself being optimistic to start the day, and then as the day goes on, okay, that's trickling away. And then at nighttime, it seems like I have a crash, and, and, and I just feel like, oh, my gosh, this is all, this is all, uh, overwhelming. Um, and I think it's a lot because of we go home, we watch the news, and then we hop on social, and we're reading these stories posted about these young people that are in the ICU, and, and, and this person is, is critically ill. And so I try to find a healthy way to deal with your anxiety instead of turning to that social media uh, outlet. It's not bad. I mean, it's okay to go there and, and see what people are going through. I mean, that's fine. Everybody's going to do it. But maybe, maybe talk with your spouse, maybe have some quiet time, watch a movie, whatever you can do to get away from it. I think what I found beneficial is getting outside. It's still okay to go outside. You're not going to just catch this thing randomly outside by breathing in the outdoor fresh air. If you run into your friends on a walk, just Leave enough room between you. You know, at least that six feet we're talking about. Leave 10, for gosh sakes, and just speak a little louder. Talk to people a little bit. Keep it brief. Move on. I think getting out, the weather's starting to turn around a little bit, it looks like. So getting out, and, and, and that'll, especially in the evening time, that'll help with your anxiety a lot. And I want to also encourage you to try not to displace that anxiety on your kids if you have kids. Kids are very impressionable, uh, and, and so don't Try to keep it together in front of them as best you can. I know that's sometimes hard, but um, and you may be stressed because you are trying to work from home and you're trying to, uh, you got demands from work, you may be feeling ill, you um, are trying to manage the kids' schoolwork because they're out of school. That's just, that's also my experience. And so just, I know that I'm quicker to, quicker to, um, not anger, but just quicker to uh, be frustrated with things. And and so try to do your best to just take a step back, calm down. Don't let that show to your kids because they are learning from you on how to manage your stress. There's my tip on that. Um, 
when you call into clinic, we're still going to be advising you to stay home if you have mild symptoms. So you have that mild shortness of breath with exertional activity, you have cough, you have sore throat, you have uh, fever, you have body aches, and it's manageable, okay? We're gonna tell you probably stay home and just self-quarantine yourself for 14 days. The reason you may feel abandoned by that, that's not the point. We're not trying to abandon you. What we're trying to do is we're trying to cut down on the rate of infection and the, and the rate of this thing spreading. Influenza spreads, um, one person infected spreads to another one person. This is called an infection rate of one, right? That's pretty well documented. This thing, it's this coronavirus, it's believed to be anywhere between 2.5 and 3.5. So an affected person, uh, infected person will affect then uh, on average three other people. And so we're trying to keep the public healthy and we're also trying to keep the people who work in the clinic and our healthcare providers, nurses, providers, everybody that is working within the facility, therapists, etc. We're trying to keep everybody here uh, healthy so that we can care for you when this thing really starts ramping up, if it does in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so that's the reason for that. Please still call in. We want to hear from you. Um, and when do you get excited? That's one, a, a very, very common thing. When do you get concerned? Um, I would say that uh, you should start getting concerned if you're showing respiratory compromise. So what does that mean? Uh, shortness of breath with exertional activity, I think that some of that is expected. You know, So if you're getting out, going, going around, walking around the house, and you get a little short-winded and then it goes away, probably pretty well expected. But if you're talking to somebody else and you're having a hard time completing sentences without feeling like you have to pause and, and you're short of breath, then we're definitely at the point where you need to have uh, emergency care or you need to be talking to your doctor. So somewhere in the middle of those two, I think you should be also in communication with your doctor's office. Um, the other reason that we're kind of trying to, or that it's hard to bring people into clinic is because testing, as you know, is really not that available at this moment, or it's getting more available, but the turnaround time on these things is extremely long. You might be waiting for a week for your results. So we're going to advise you to stay home anyway, and so that's kind of the theory, the idea there. Until we get more widespread testing, these drive-up tests are starting to pop up. Um, then it's best to stay home and just not affect any other people. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on is uh, it's an unfortunate thing, it's an uncomfortable thing, but it's something that needs to be talked about that will make things go a lot smoother. Vast majority of cases are mild, and so you may experience nothing, and you may experience just some mild cold-like features. But say you are one of those people that gets critically ill, um, it's good to have advanced directives in place. And so that means what would you like to see happen if you are to get sick to the point where you need to have intubation, so you need to have a breathing tube put in, so you need to have uh, chest compressions done. These are things that you can lay out with in a living will or with a power of attorney, a loved one and let them know your wishes. And it's good to have that all set in place so there's not a scramble when you do become critically ill if you were to. So talk about that with your significant other. Um, it's a hard thing to talk about, but I encourage you to do that. And then also, I would bring it up with your parents. Uh, it affects people that are advanced of advanced age a little bit more seriously, it looks like. Uh, now we're seeing some young people getting critically ill, so that's why I'm encouraging you young people too. But it still looks like the majority of cases that are serious or critical in the ICU are, are of older people. And so talk about it with your parents. Make sure your parents have something lined up. Um, we have ways to help you with that too. We have forms that you can that we can give you and you can fill out too. So that's about enough, I guess, for today. And we'll see what tomorrow brings. It's such a rapidly evolving situation. So stay healthy, wash your hands like crazy, don't touch your face, stay home if you're feeling sick, and call us with questions.